Hi, my name is Paul Hardiman and I'm from Galway, Ireland. I first saw an image of yoga in my hometown in Galway, and, but at the time Ireland was a very religious place. And I looked at all these beautiful, long people stretching and I was like, well, it's not ballet, but they're doing something. And I asked somebody, I said, how do I go up there? And they said, they'll brainwash your son. So uh, at the fear of being brainwashed, I regret not being brainwashed earlier. I, um, I, moved to Cal um, I moved to Seattle. And when I moved to Seattle, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, Katrina, she was having issues, the sacroiliac and the lower back. And someone suggested it to her, so that's in 1994. And she said, hey, do you want to come along? It was kind of really nice and calming. And I guess she felt I needed nice and calming in my life. So I did go, and I remember saying something in the area of, please don't tell the lads, tell them I was at a kickboxing class, you know. And then I went, and I got on board. Uh, it was a beautiful little man. I do remember the style, Sachit Ananda, but I don't remember his name. It was in the U District. And shortly after I moved to California, where everybody had a yoga mat, a laptop writing their script, a latte, flip-flops, and it was kind of the rite of passage. It's like, well, what are you doing? Are you going to the bar? No, we're going to yoga. I went, okay, let's check out, because I, I liked what I tasted, and I did want to taste more, and it was right there. So the first place I went to was a gym, and uh, it was this lovely, thin man, and he said he was doing yoga but it was different to what I experienced before. So at that time in 96, it was just all yoga. It's yoga, well, let's go do yoga. Later I found out that was Kundalini yoga. And I'd spent three years just swishing the body around going, it's crazy, I loved it. And then we moved and evolved, I wouldn't say evolved, like I just, what happens, I transitioned in a different direction. And um, everybody, <laughs> The one thing I noticed is that everybody loved their version to the point where they would go, this is the way, all that other stuff, second rate. But I liked all of them, they all had something to offer. So I found myself hesitant to go down a specific lineage until I met a man who wouldn't go down a specific lineage. And he, he's a giant man with long hair and I think he's been in this room before. So I liked what he said, trust yourself, you know. And all the books I had were ultimately saying, trust yourself. It's about a path of you having that, those experiences. And I noticed I lost my way a lot as I had the experience of the yoga, I felt like a better person, but I, after a while, was trying to shift into being a better yogi, not a better person. And, and there was that, that crossroads of, of either feeling good and content and grateful and all those things that I could share with everybody in my life, or I found myself kind of getting into a group mentality and just talking about, and it, there's parodies of it a lot now on YouTube, it's great to parody yoga. But I found there was also an exclusion in only talking certain words and, and phrases and lifestyles. And, and I felt like I lost all these beautiful people in my life because I had a mission and a journey. And when I couldn't share that experience with someone like my mother, my sister, my children, I now am grateful that I've taught people in wheelchairs, Down syndrome, and who's to say they couldn't do it? And if they're doing it, then what's all this other stuff? What matters? Um, it just gave me gratitude to just do enough to be healthy. And um, this is where I'm at. I'm still on that journey. Kind of, I'm more on the peripheral yogi because I still don't want, I want to have the experience of all those other people in my life rather than the, this is my way. And I have a beer. <laughs> and that's really it. There's no more else. There's not much else to say on that issue, I think. 
there are moments, and that's what they have been. They've been moments of having the experience of tasting yoga, where everything seemed okay. Okay, because I'll try and say it another way. I read all the fancy books, and they all said something. And you've heard that phrase, um, those that were seen dancing were thought crazy by those that couldn't hear the music. But I did feel that that again, I was like, well, why don't those people who hear the music try and share it? And then I'd read all these, these scriptures and they were trying to share it. I just didn't understand. And so I was like, oh, okay, speak in your riddles, foreign people. And next one, next one. At some point, you'd go back to those and they go, huh, they were saying that all along. And then you ended up being that crazy person looking, going. When I first met my, a yoga teacher, I would look and go, why are they talking crazy like that? And then years later, I'm talking and I saw somebody else looking at me with those same eyes and I went, huh. So the transmission of the information is really important to me. But getting back to that taste of yoga, it sounds cliched, it sounds bumper stickered because that's the experience. And even if I do say it to you, everything feels right and everything feels balanced. Everything feels like I get it, even if it's just for a moment. There's the, but does that make sense to somebody? Saying, he said he gets it. I can't have, you have to go through the experience. And this is why we, we come and do the practice. I could play you a song about how I get it, or you can come and get it for yourself. And I hope that makes sense. Um, there are moments. And, I, and there are moments of solace that I do go to uh, and work towards. And I believe they're worth working towards. I don't know if that place is up there. For me, I'm just, just moving along and when things seem in balance, there is no, I mean, you know the story, the universe is just expanding, our planet, our whole solar system is moving. So where is it? We're just, we're here. Wherever you go, there you are. So just be here and it sounds obvious, be present. So. I guess just let go of the resistance, just, just have that moment of being in it and, and enjoying it and experiencing it and, and do your dance, sing your song. It's not sung unless it's expressed. So just by getting the tissue to move in all the different directions, maybe there's a song in there somewhere. Maybe you can feel something that you go, I needed to feel that. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I came to teach because I needed the money and the lap dancing was going down. But I still got the moves and I still have hopes and I still have dreams. Um, I came to teach. I came to teach yoga truthfully because I didn't hear what was expressed that mattered to me where I went. I love being a student. I, I love being a student. I didn't know at the time I love to try and share the information. And I see that um, with a lot of new teachers, I'm not pretending I'm some old teacher, but when I see a beautiful young boy, girl, teacher full of enthusiasm come through and they go, oh God, please, I don't want to lose that enthusiasm because I, that's that moment. It's like that moment where you see something beautiful on Facebook. And then two years later, one of your best friend gets it and shares it with you. And you want, you're like, isn't this amazing? And you're like, yeah. It's and you don't want to lose that enthusiasm that you know they've had and you've had. It's digested at some point for you, but you should never lose that enthusiasm. So I'm looking for that. How I got into teaching is in the place where I set up home now in Ireland, in Galway, Ireland. There were people with very clear ideas of what yoga was. And this is how you do it. And that's wrong. And this is right. With one crowd and the other crowd are like, no, that's how. 
the people's Judea in front and the people's front of Judea. I think you know what I'm saying here. It's like, we have so much in common. And they were both right. They were both right. Depending on you, what mattered to you at that time. When I have my toes straight, I can feel my core when I'm in the Chaturanga. If I have my toes bent, I can feel the toes stretch. What matters to you? They're both right. So people had a very clear idea of what they wanted for them, and you should follow my way. I'm not sure what any way is. I just know when I have an experience, and I wanted to share the idea that it's okay to have your experience as long as it's done safely. I noticed people had a specific idea of the, of the, um, the idea of the relevance and the re reverence of range of motion, something I don't have. And part of me felt, am I entitled to be a yoga teacher? I don't have all that beautiful, you know, um, range and Instagram stuff. But the experiences were still real, and I watched a lot of friends that wanted to have that experience, but they thought the image was too far from where they were. And a lot of them, and including myself, I don't want to say, felt like the broken toys in Toy Story 3. They were, we were all like, I wish I could, but I'm, you know, they're the new toys. They're the... And the whole idea of union and yoga for me is, is the inclusiveness. So there is, no, there is no us and them in that aspect. Everything those beautiful fit people do is beautiful, is a beautiful expression. And I hope someday to be able to express like that, but I'm quite happy just navigating along and taking my crew with me and whoever wants to join in, whoever wants to jump off, and they do. They come, they go, and we have a great experience at our studio, and this is just, for me, what's happening here is more like an experiment. It's, it's, it's this idea of the internet and this particular company and how they're transmitting the information. That matters to me because I believe in the message behind these people. It's not dogmatic, it is inclusive, and I am proud and glad to be here. My family life challenges me <laughs> on what I believe yoga is. At an early age, my oldest son, when I was reading all the books, um, Manny Finger, Todd Allen Finger, and Allen Finger became, he, got a, he gave, gave, got a lovely title. And um, Krishna Macharya and how he taught his son, and tied them in knots and at age seven. And then I tied my son in a knot, no. <laughs> no, I, I, I asked my son, you are going to do the practice. It will be like brushing your teeth. And I spoke like this because that's how you speak. I spent weeks in India, I must be like this. So um, I told him he has to do the practice until it's something he doesn't think about, like riding a bike, here we go. And the day he said to me, um, Dad, why are you punishing me? Why are you torturing me? I went, you will be tortured <laughs> until I say. And I was all, I was like, oh man, I did. I kept him going for another week, hoping that he'd go, you know, this isn't torture, this is something beautiful. My dad must like it, so I must like it. And it didn't happen. So I got into the sports he got into. And I got into judo because he did judo. And I got into rugby because my other son, Owen, does rugby and now I'm the coach. <laughs> for all coaches out there, good luck. Um, and now I'm into basketball. I'm five foot ten. Swish. You know, I'm into it and I'm invested. But the truth is, is I'm trying to introduce yoga into these aspects of their life. And I have ended up coaching the soccer coach, the soccer training, the football. I've coached yoga, the judo. And sometimes I don't call it yoga. 
because, um, because there's a reference of something, I'm not sure, we are a Catholic country, what does that mean? So, but the principles are always sound and they're universal. Do those principles need an actual name? At some point they do. They, they do need, how will we navigate to the experience we're having um, so we can become more fluent? My whole family, um, I have my own roller coaster rides. I might come home from work a little depleted. But I've great support for my family and and they're great with me. And and even being here, and I'm not here that long, I miss them. And I'm given permission to miss them. And I get a little text with a big XOXO. And um Things are good in my life. Huh. Yeah. What's moving me forward is it's a double-edged sword. I recognize the potency of the simplicity of some of the shapes, but keeping it regular, a simple regular practice and the potency of that mixed with, but why not? Why not try and do those shapes, you know, and why not push up against the edges? Um, a lot of people are pushing up against the edges exclusively. And I, I get it. Um, but what I see sometimes and, and if I say anything that sounds dismissive, it's something I had to go through or am going through. Where someone might say, um, oh yeah, I've been to that teacher and they're ticking boxes and slashing them off. Or then they're weighing the teachers. They're weighing like, oh yeah, yeah. oh you said it that way, this guy said it that way. Rather than the information that's been dispensed, yes, we could all read the information off the back of a toilet door wall and say, this is what it is. But it's important for me, for someone to go through the experience of, it's okay for it to be the same. It's not, we don't have to stimulate it. It's not Las Vegas where you go in going, yeah, and leave feeling depleted. It's just the simplicity of what I'm asking someone to do might sound stale after a while. I just want to keep it simple. I want to keep it simple and occasionally let's delve and just see what it's like to play and move. And, but the principles never lose focus of, of what's important and, and how to reconnect. And it is a breathing practice for me. And the shapes sometimes are something that anchor me towards the breath. Sometimes it's the breath that anchors me to the shapes, but that's the dance. There, there are a few teachers, um, a few teachers that mean something to me. I did mention, and it could have been one or two people, but, but Eric Schiffman does mean so much to me. He gives you permission. He gives me permission. Why not? And I like that idea that if it works for somebody and somebody came up with the idea, it works. So sometimes that itself is like, well, if it worked for them, I wonder if I can navigate and feel the experience they had and, and now we are connected. So instead of going, no, that doesn't resonate with me, go, be curious of why. That's, that's another whole yoga experience. There's another tall man named Max Strom. I, I, I had a big fondness for that big man. Um, and then there's the small packages. I do want to give a shout out to Keir Sloan. Um, I find her intelligence. Sometimes uh, she look at you and it'll burn right through you. Now, she's, she's involved in this, in this project, but her ability to transmit, I see a fearlessness that I wish that I had. And I have a martial arts background, blah, 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 blah. But the idea of exposing yourself and just being free and clear, 
that's such a lovely quality to see in somebody and it gives me permission to try and find that within myself. There was two old ornery guys that did Ashtanga. And though I'm not an Ashtangi, I do love um, David Swenson. And <laughs> he's funny. And um, <laughs> he had a student. Um, I just thought he was cool. Uh, Danny Paradise. I thought he was cool. He's like, hey, man. But there's so many. Um, I know I'm supposed to stay on the path of yogis. The old man next door to me goes, I just sit here every morning and I do me breathing, Paul. And I just move my hands together and I move them apart. But you know all about that stuff. And I was going, no, please tell me more. <laughs> but you know all that because you, you read the books. So he's, and he goes, and I feel it. And I feel it and it's real and it keeps me going. Now, I made him sound like a pirate. If you ever see this, I'm a dead man. But luckily, he doesn't know where the internet is. It's under your couch. Um, I like that. I liked the guy who would all talk to me about how his dad made him, made him saw till his nerves calmed down. I was like, that's yoga. All my martial arts teachers, they were, without knowing we were doing yoga, there was aspects there where I went. And there were the bits that made me realize I was doing that all along. I didn't have a label or a structure and a specific task of, so it helped rein it towards a direction. There were some beautiful teachers at Yoga Works. And my own wife, Katrina, is a lovely teacher. I love going to her class. All her problems go away. <laughs> um, and Yoga Works um, and Van Valkenburg. And one of my favorites, who I, she's in Los Angeles, but she's this quiet, shy girl. And she just kind of tips along. Ryan Schumacher. I always liked her. She's, she's this little soft, but she, I started with her in, in, in a gym and she'd kind of come out and we'd hang and talk and it was beautiful. And just one more. I found him quirky. It was the quirkiness. Chad Hamron. Chad Hamron was, was like, what's he going to do? <laughs> you know? And then, and then there was a uh, yoga rock star. I liked him. What's his name? Uh, Maha Yoga. Steve. Steve, I'll swear at you while I'm asking you to downward dog. Um, anyway, I love, I've very, very, very rarely had a bad experience in any yoga class. And the one place I did have a bad experience in a yoga class I learned a very valuable lesson there. I knew what I didn't want, but everything gave me something beautiful and positive. I have no problem with set structures. If somebody makes the choice to live within those parameters and it works for them, that's great. But ultimately, kindness, and it sounds almost so simple you're like ah come on Paul kindness we can all say kindness but um I think sometimes give up kindness on themselves to work or attain towards a belief system and that itself is a detachment and we could physically I've noticed it if I'm jumping from down dog to standing forward fold there's a disconnect and I hear this clunk it's like I'm jumping from one place, but I'll disconnect from the body because I need to get there. And there's an overextension and it's expressed through a certain physical clunk. I've over, they've disconnected from the tissue. So I can see it on a physical level and it's usually expressed differently. But leaving the mat aside, that's a person that needs to be kind to themselves and say, I need to do less to keep, wherever you go, there you are. So keep the connection as you move. And to a teacher is, don't get so caught up. Don't, we can go further with the kindness and call it love. We can, there's so many different expressions of love. But I'm gonna stay with the kindness. 
if we could just learn to be kind to ourselves and as a teacher, let them make mistakes as long as it doesn't hurt. And if it does, just be there. And that matters a lot to me. That matters a lot. Mm.